Hello kids, this is lesson five. Title of lesson five is more work with algebra and today we're going to talk about properties in algebra. Uh, a property in algebra the word property means it's kind of like a rule. A property is it's a statement that is true for all numbers. Is a statement that is true for all numbers. It's a statement, a property is a statement that is true for all numbers. Uh, today we're going to learn about some uh, properties and a couple of these we've already talked about so they're kind of coming back around again and there's uh, for these properties there's uh, addition versions of the property and multiplication versions of the property. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, separate our page into Addition is going to be on this side. These are going to be the addition properties. And on this side, we will make multiplication properties. <clears throat> the first property we're going to look at on the addition side, an example of the first property is this. 5 plus 3 is the same thing as 3 plus 5. Okay, this is an example of the commutative property. So what that means is the commutative property tells you if you're adding two things, the order does not matter. 5 plus 3 is the same as 3 plus 5. You can switch the order, it doesn't matter. And I can solve these, solve the expression on both sides, to see that it's true. These are also known as equivalent expressions. Five plus three is the same thing as three plus five. The multiplication version of that property, so let's draw a line down the middle separating addition from multiplication. The multiplication version of this property is, here's an example of it, 4 times 6 is the same thing as 6 times 4. And again, we can solve that expression and solve that expression. 4 times 6 is 24. 6 times 4 is 24, and those are equivalent. So again, these are equivalent expressions. Okay, the name of this property is the commutative property. That's how that's said. The commutative property. The commutative property of addition says 5 plus 3 is the same thing as 3 plus 5. Order doesn't matter. And same with multiplying. The mul if you're multiplying two numbers, the order does not matter. So now I'm going to write the commutative property uh, using variables because it could be, this is an example, but it's true for any numbers. So we could say that any number plus any other number, a plus b is the same thing as b plus a. And on this side, if I'm using variables, I could say that a times b is the same thing as b times a. Again, I'm gonna, this is an example of the property. This is the property using variables because it's true for any numbers. That's what we said at the beginning. Property is a statement that's true for all numbers. So, the commutative property is 
Here's the addition, the commutative property of addition. Here is the commutative property of multiplication. The next property we're going to look at is here's an example of the next property. I could say that 3 plus 9 plus 4 equals 3 plus 9 plus 4. So take a look at that example. Notice a couple of things. The numbers are exactly the same on each side of the equal sign, and they're in the same order. 3, 9, 4, 3, 9, 4. Everything's being added. What's different are the parentheses groupings. And if I solve this side, I do parentheses first, I'd get 13 plus 3, which is 16. If I solve this expression, I would solve these parentheses first, I would get 12 plus 4, I also get 16. So these are, once again, equivalent expressions. And the multiplication version of this property looks like this. Again, here is an example. 3 times 2 times 4 is the same thing as 3 times 2 times 4. And again, notice some patterns when you look at this. The numbers are identical on both sides of the equal sign, and they're in the same order, 3, 2, 4, 3, 2, 4. What's changed are the groupings. Here, 2 and 4 are in parentheses. Here, 3 and 2 are in parentheses. But again, let's do the same thing we did before. Solve this. I would do parentheses first. 2 times 4 is 8. 3 times 8 is 24. And then solve on this side. 3 times 2 is 6 times 4 we get 24. Again, equivalent expressions. We get the same thing. This property is called the associative property. And again, I'm going to do the same thing I did before. This is an example, addition version of associative property associative property of multiplication. I'm now going to show using variables the property because it's true for all numbers. So the associative property would look like this. A plus B plus C is the same thing as A plus B in parentheses plus C. The multiplication version looks like this. Again, I'm using variables to show the property because it's true for all numbers. Okay, the next property that we're going to talk about, or the next properties, are called the identity properties. And again, there's an identity property of addition. There's an identity property of multiplication. So I want you to think about this. Your identity is who you are, right? And again, this, just extend this line down. Your identity is who you are. So if I am the number five, what can I add to myself so that I stay, I keep my identity? Well, you can look at that and probably figure it out pretty easily. 
What can I add to 5 so that it stays the same? I can add 0 to 5 and it will stay a 5. And again, I can write that with variables a plus 0 is always going to be a. And a can be any number. So 0 is known as the additive identity because you can add it to anything and that thing is going to keep its identity. It's not going to change. All right, now let's pretend that we're the number 7 and we want to keep our identity. So 7 times something and I want to stay the number 7. I want my identity to remain the same, not change. What can I put in there? 7 times what? And I'm going to stay a 7. Well, the answer is 1. 1 is called the multiplicative identity. If you multiply something by 1, it's going to keep its identity. And again, I can show that with variables. Any number times 1 is going to stay that number. So now let's get out some color. Identity properties. 0 and 1. 0 is known as the additive identity. We can add 0 to anything and it's going to keep its identity. 1 is known as, this is a long word, the multiplicative identity. Okay, the multiplicative identity. If you are a number and you want to keep your identity, you can multiply by one, you're going to stay who you are. All right, your practice today is using the properties, but how you're going to use the properties is you're going to compare two expressions, and you're going to look at the expressions and figure out are they equivalent expressions or are they not equivalent expressions. If they are equivalent, then you're going to determine, figure out which property is being used. We'll do one example. So again, this is what your practice is going to look like. You're going to get two expressions. Okay, two expressions. First thing you're going to do is determine if equivalent. So I'm going to say, I'm just going to write the word equivalent, question mark. Equival, equivalent. Sorry about that. Equivalent. First thing you're going to do is look at the two expressions, figure out are these equivalent or not. And if they are, if yes, which property Is it showing? And if no, or if they're not equivalent, why? So let's walk through an example. Here's an example. Two expressions. 15 plus 5 plus 8 and fifteen plus five plus eight. So I'm going to solve this expression first. To do that, I do parentheses first. Five plus eight is thirteen. I get thirteen plus fifteen. And over here, fifteen plus five, I'm going to solve that first. I get twenty plus 8. Now, if I continue adding 15 plus 13, I get 28. On this side, I get 28. So these are equivalent expressions. I get the same thing. 28 equals 28. So what I would say is, are they equivalent? I would say yes. 
they are equivalent. Second thing I have to do is, we'll look at this. If they are equivalent, which property is being shown? Well, this one has three th numbers involved and parentheses. There's no parentheses in the commutative property. It deals with adding, same numbers, same order, just different groupings. I've figured out it is this. It is the associative property of addition. So that would be the second part. Yes, they are equivalent. And I would say associative property of addition. This is what your practice looks like today. Two expressions, solving both of them, following order of operations. If they're the same, if they are equivalent, say so, and find which property. If they are not equivalent, say so, and explain why. OK, uh, let me find hidden treasure for this lesson. We are lesson five. Here is this, les this lesson's hidden treasure. OK, there it is. Solve that puzzle. Common words, phrase, what does that translate to? If you can figure that out and you've got all your chapter notes and you finish this assignment, you could be the lucky winner. That wraps up lesson five. See you soon for lesson six.